up guys? My name is Jonathan. Um, I'm a photographer and I wanted to talk about how I got into film amongst many other things. So let's get into it. So this isn't going to be any sort of like organized, well thought out, well edited video. This is more or less just going to be just my thoughts on how I would recommend someone get into film and kind of my journey that I took to get there. So film was pretty intimidating for me to get into mostly because I've been shooting on my Fuji films, my X100V and X-T3 for three years, which is great, but I really had an itch that I wanted to try film, mostly because I, f I find the process to be super interesting, but really it's because of how beautiful the images come out, and I wanted to just figure it out for myself. So I can totally understand if you've never shot film before, you don't know someone in your life who has a film camera that you can try out, it can be super intimidating. So here's what I did. Obviously I reached out to my friends who I knew who sh shot film uh, to get their thoughts and recommendations. No one said don't do it, despite all these prices that you hear everyone complain about. I basically wanted to keep it as minimal as possible. I wanted to have film be kind of like a companion to my Fujifilm systems that I use. So the original thinking was I'm going to shoot my digital, it's like usual, and then I wanted a camera I can do a couple shots here and there with me on film to kind of ease into film, but also keep the cost down. I think price amongst all the other factors is probably the scariest reason to get into film. It's so much different than digital, which obviously can balloon up, but you really have to think about cost per shot. There's obviously you need to get the cameras, the bodies, the lenses, etc. Then you have to get the film. If you're shooting 35 millimeter, you get anywhere from 36 to 38 shots. And then for 120, it can be sometimes half of that. But you're very conscious of that. And then on top of that, once you finish a roll, you need to get it developed and then you need to scan it. And so if you're brand new to this whole film process, like me, probably gonna use a lab and have that outsourced. So again, it's scary. I totally understand that. So I'll tell you what I did, which obviously is not gonna work for everybody, but it's definitely what worked out well for me. So again, trying to keep everything minimal, cost, size, and the workflow as simple as possible. I shoot with my Fuji films for a reason because they're small and portable. Um, my X100V I take with me everywhere. So I wanted something that was pocket sized that I could, again, yeah, just take with me anywhere and grab a couple frames here and there. So what I ended up going for is this guy, point and shoot. More specifically, this is the uh, Olympus Nitty Stylus or the Olympus Mu One as it's known. And this thing has just made film super easy for me. And I also think has made me a better photographer. So I was looking at a ton of different point and shoot options and there's so many great ones out there. This one has a really good reputation. And the reason I was going for a point and shoot is because a couple of reasons. One, they're really small. Two, they have autofocus built in, are pretty reliable for shots. They produce just great results. Again, this I was trying to keep things simple for myself. I was starting out as a companion to my digital, not film only. One of the recommendations I kept getting was to get a Canon AE-1, which is a very popular choice. And I have that now, but I didn't start out with that. But if you know for sure that you want more control over your shots, you want to control everything from focusing to all your settings, then that is 100% the way to go. Probably that or Minolta X700 that have program modes, which is basically a full auto mode. So similar to what I'm doing with the point and shoot, keep everything super simple. And it's been, I think that is definitely the way to go. So shooting with my point and shoot has made me a better photographer, mostly because I can leave the settings and the focus to the camera itself. And I can just focus on the composition. And again, because each shot matters so much from a cost perspective, I have to really stop and think about what I want in frame and what I want this composition to be. So a lot of my favorite photos have come from my film photography from a composition perspective, but also the film itself. And there's a lot of talk online about the cost of film. And at this point in time for me, I think it's worth it just because I can't replicate personally digitally how film renders and there's a lot of presets you can buy online there's also a lot of time you can invest to make your photos look like film but the things that i like the most is the imperfections that come out from film 
So some examples of my favorite imperfections from my film photos is light leaks is a very popular one. I personally love them. There's also some scratches or grain that comes out that on my digital camera I would probably work to get rid of, but with film I just embrace it. So that being said, I wanted to give some recommendations on my favorite films. I'm pretty basic with <laughs> what films that I like. I recently posted on threads what my top five films are in my experience and I got a ton of responses about new films that I need to try. That's been one of the fun parts about getting into film is I've been trying to get my hands on and shoot as many of the different stocks as I can. Gone through most of the staples like Kodak films, I've gone through a couple of Cinestill films. I'm also now that my friend has lent me his AE-1, shooting all my black and white film with this guy. So I'm very excited to see how those come out. My top five favorite films, I would say my absolute favorite is Portra 800. I just love the saturation that comes out of it. Everyone talks about Portra 400, 800. 800 is my favorite just because it's so flexible with the higher ISO. Living in Seattle, the light is never perfect, especially in the winter time. It's more variable, so I can always rely on this film to give me great results. And my second favorite film, which is a complete surprise to me, and it has really become one of my go-tos since I've started shooting film, is a Cinestill 400D. Again, I was not expecting this at all. I actually expected it to be Portra 400 because it's so popular and some of my favorite pictures that inspired me to really jump to film were taken on Portra 400. But I think what stood out to me about Cinestill 400D is one, the colors. I mean, they look extremely filmic. There's a lot of really warm tones, which is what I'm drawn to, but the halation effect is super fun, especially in bright sunlight. You get this really nice halation, which Cinestill is famous for, but it really just adds to the drama of an image. The other thing which I talked about previously is the light leaks. For some reason, when I shoot 400D, the light leaks go crazy on my camera and I think it's probably because of the halation effect. I don't know any of the technicals, but I've gotten some of my absolute favorite images with this one. So if it's a bright, sunny day, and I'm in a setting where, especially like in a city or some architectural shots, I'll go with 400D. So my other favorite film, which is really a go-to for me, is Ultramax. So I really didn't expect Ultramax to be one of my favorites. I think I use it more than Portra 400, obviously mostly because it's cheaper and it's a pretty good mid-range ISO. But Ultramax, again, has this really nice saturation, similar to Portra 800 but it is even more saturated, at least in my opinion, and I love the colors that I get out of it. The Kodak films themselves have a really nice warm undertone, which is what I'm drawn to, so I just think Ultramax renders really beautifully, and also, depending on the lighting conditions, it matches up really well with the Portras. I've posted sets where I throw in a mix of Portra 800, Portra 400, and Ultramax, and it's impossible to tell what's what, at least for me. So yeah, my other two favorite films, Portrait 400, which I've talked a lot about. It's not my absolute favorite, which I thought it would be, but it's definitely in my top five. It's just, it's always beautiful, even in lower lighting conditions. With my point and shoot, I can only shoot at box speed, so I'll just shoot that in most conditions like it would Portrait 800. It does miss a little bit more than 800, at least for how I shoot, for me personally, but it's beautiful. I really don't have any other complaints. I use it for my landscapes, for city shots as well. It's so flexible and I probably will be using it a lot more this year as I'm getting into more lifestyle photography and some portraits as well to see how that does. But Portra 400 is a staple and I probably would shoot it more if it wasn't for the price. For me, Portra 800, even though it's super pricey at this point, it never fails for me and is my absolute favorite. So I can justify it in my mind, at least. My last of my top five favorite films is Fujifilm Superior. This I bought from a friend. I haven't been able to find it at my local store, but it's more desaturated. Just renders sunlight so beautifully. It's a softer film, at least 
how it comes out of my point and shoot and the colors with it are just beautiful and so i highly recommend if you can get your hands on it it's really hard to get your hands on you know stock up soon but that was a surprise for me as well so i wanted to give just my top five favorite films you know i shoot everything i shoot color plus gold 200 a cinestell 800t has been super fun for me and i'm always looking to try new films as well so Please leave some, your favorite films in the comments below, especially ones that maybe are not as popular because again, my goal is to shoot every single film at least once that I can. Thank you so much for watching guys. There will be plenty more videos in the future. I have big plans for the next year and I'm excited to show you what I have in store. Please like and subscribe. Uh, all the YouTube stuff and again comment below your favorite films recommendations you have for me and also good luck to those who are getting into film you can always DM me on Instagram or leave comments here I'll try to respond if you have any questions on getting into film for the first time all right thanks peace